This lesson is on angles and the unit circle, but before we begin, um, I wanted to do a quick review of special right triangles. Hopefully you remember from geometry, if we have a right triangle that the two angles are 45 degrees and 45 degrees, then the lengths of the sides are in a ratio of x to x to x squared of 2. And in a 30-60-90 triangle, okay, in a 30-60-90, the um, lengths, the ratios of the sides, the one across from the 30 is x, the one across from the 60 is x squared of 3, and the hypotenuse is 2x. Um, so those will be important because we're going to use that knowledge in our unit circle. That's where we get a lot of information. Okay, so our objectives, uh, we're going to answer the question, how do special right triangles in the unit circle relate to one another? So we're going to work with angles in standard position, and then find coordinate points of points on the unit circle. So here's some vocab. An angle in the coordinate plane is in standard position when the vertex is at the origin and one ray is on the positive x-axis. So you have... Um, like your vertex, your point where your two rays connect on your origin, you have one that's pointing straight to the right and then you have another one somewhere um, in your plane. The ray on the x axis is called the initial side of the angle and the other ray is called the terminal side of the angle. So there's a picture. So you have your um, vertex at the origin, you have your initial side along the x axis in a positive direction and then you have your terminal side anywhere else pointing anywhere else, or it could even be pointing to the same place. Hmm. Okay, so what's the measure of each angle? So looking at this one, so if we're going in a counterclockwise method, we always count this as positive degrees. So if we go from um, our initial side to our terminal side being um, on the y-axis, how many degrees is that? Well, this is our right angle, so this one is 90 degrees. Okay, for this one, when we go from our um, initial side, we're going in a clockwise direction. This is a negative value for our degrees. So we're going 90 degrees here, so we have 90 there, plus here we have halfway through another 45 degrees. So 90 and 45, and it makes that negative, is negative 135 degrees. Pretty easy. Uh, for this one, what do you think? Is this going to be positive or negative? Well, this is going to be a positive value. We go 90, we go another 90, and then we go another 45. So we have 180 and 45 more. When you add them together, you get, let's see, 225. So 225 degrees. So sketching angles in standard position. What's a sketch of an angle in standard position? For 36 degrees, we're going to go counterclockwise, standard position, and then we're going to go a little bit less than 45 degrees. So there's 36 degrees. What about 315 degrees? Starting in standard position, we're still going to go counterclockwise. We'll go around. How far will we have to go around? Well, 90, then 180, then we go another 90, we're at 210, and then we have to go still another 45 degrees to make 315. So we need to go three quarters of the way around and then another half. So there's our 315 degrees. What about negative 150 degrees? Well, this time we're going to go clockwise, starting in standard position. So we'll go 90 degrees. And then we still have to account for 60 more degrees, so another two-thirds of the way. And then there's our negative 150 degrees. Okay, so I want you to write these three. I want you to do standard position um, on your paper. You're going to compare this with your partner. So coterminal angles. 
Two angles in standard position are coterminal angles if they have the same terminal side. So if they end at the same place, they are coterminal. So which of the following angles is not coterminal with any of the other three? Okay, so let's look at where these angles end. So I'm going to start with 300 degrees. Well, if I start with, let me do this in green, why not? 300 degrees. So I'm going to start on my um, initial side. See, 90 is up here. 180 is down here. That's 270. And then I need another 30 more. So this right here is my 300 degrees. Alright, so let me pick another color, like this one. Negative 60 degrees. So I'm going to go from my terminal, or my initial side, I'm going to go clockwise 60 degrees. Well, those ones are coterminal. What about um, positive 60 degrees? Positive 60 degrees, I'm going to go counterclockwise. It's up here. That one is not coterminal. So I'm going to guess it's that one. But let's look at the last one, just for fun. Okay, so negative 420 degrees. Well, I know I'm going to go counterclockwise or clockwise. Around the circle one time is 360 degrees. So if I do 420 minus 360, that leaves me with another 60 degrees to go. So I end up down here, coterminal. So the only one that didn't end at the same place as the other three was the 60 degree angle. Alright, and then you can go ahead and um, try this one on your own. Find out which of these angles are coterminal. So cosine and sine of an angle. The unit circle has a radius of one unit and its center at the origin. Um, I'm going to put up a unit circle here in a minute and I'm going to need you to memorize it. And I know it's a lot of information, but I'm going to explain why it's important. So suppose that an angle in standard position has a measure of theta. That's what that little weird O with the line through it means is theta. The cosine of theta, written as cos theta, is the x-coordinate of the point at which the terminal side of the angle intersects the unit circle. So when we memorize this unit circle, when we look at a certain degree of an angle, the x-coordinate of that point on the circle is actually the cosine of that value. The sine of theta, written as sin theta, is the y-coordinate. So cosine and then sine. Think of them alphabetically. Um, so, for example, this one has 30 degrees. So, if we find that point, the value of that point, um, our x-coordinate is the cosine of 30 and our y-coordinate is the sine of 30 degrees. Okay, now here's the big scary unit circle. It's really not that big or scary. But if you look on here, we have um, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees, and then every variation in there. Um, <clears throat> the reason why you need to memorize it, especially this one, is because if you look, we're talking about 30 degrees. Um, my pencil didn't show up again. Come on, pencil. There it is. Okay, so if we're talking about a 30 degree angle, so this one right here. What we're looking at is here, there's 30 degrees. This is our radian measure. Pi over 6 is our radian measure. And then here, a cosine of 30 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. So I wouldn't have to put cosine 30 into my calculator because it's not going to give me square root of 3 over 2. It's going to give me a decimal approximation. But if I put in sine of 30, it's going to give me 0.5 because the sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. So by memorizing this unit circle and knowing the values and what they represent, it's going to help a lot with um, some stuff that we're going to be doing for the rest of the semester. So memorizing this is really, 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 really important. And if you know it, then Mr. McDonald is going to be like over the moon thrilled. Um, <clears throat> and then this also has a pattern. So if you look, we have um, square root of 3 over 2, 1 half, square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, 1 half, square root of 3 over 2. So this one is same values for x and y. These two switch places. Same for this one. 
these two, switch places, our x and our y value. And then um, the same thing, these are the same here and here, except these become negative. Why do they become negative? Well, because they're in their negative quadrant. So that it should make sense that our x values are negative. The same is true for our values of pi. We have pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, pi over 2. So we're getting um, closer and closer and closer to a ratio of 1. And then we have 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 6. And it just continues. Then we have 6 pi over 6. So this is just pi. 7 pi over 6, 5 pi over 4, 4 pi over 3. So there is a pattern. There is a rhyme and a reason. And if you memorize that pattern and what each of those things represents, it's going to be a very beneficial for you. So finding cosines and sines of angles. What are the cosine theta and sine theta for theta equals 90 degrees, negative 180 degrees, and 270 degrees? Well, if we think about um, 90 degrees, on the unit circle, um, we look at this, our initial side, our terminal side. What is the value of this point? Well, that's 0, 1. So what is the cosine? Cosine is always the first value. So cosine of 90 equals 0. And sine of 90 equals 1, the second value. Pretty simple. What about um, the second one? Negative 180 degrees. Well, on my... Um, Unit circle, negative 180 degrees, is this direction, and my terminal point is over here. What is this point? Well, this is the point, negative 1, 0. So cosine of negative 180 degrees is negative 1, 